love. Love is such a funny thing because very often we confuse love with attachment and codependency. We think love should be, I love this person and I have to be with them all the time. Or this person fills my void and I must provide this space for them. This person is my life raft. They are my one and only. That is not love. And honestly, love can never, ever be given at 100% or received at 100% until it starts with self-love. Self-love is kind of scary, right? Especially if you don't know what it is. Because for so long, you've been told who you are and what's expected of you. And how your self-love can sometimes be selfish. It's never selfish. Welcome to the Positivity Experience, Episode 33, Self-Love. Check it out. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Positivity Experience. I am your host, Lori, and this is the second time I'm recording this episode because the entire time that I was recording the episode the first time, it was not picking up on my microphone. It was picking up on the computer. And when I was listening it, to it back, because I try to listen to it back to just see how the audio is. Oh my God, it sounded like I was in a tin can. So I don't know how this one's going to be, but the last one was really good. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, well, you know what? It is what it is. And those are things that are out of your control. And you have two choices. You can either be pissed off about it or you can say, okay, no big deal. What can I do about it? So here we are. I hope you guys are going good this week. And, you know, this week I am so excited. Of course, you guys know this. I've had my pumpkin spice latte. Um, That's my biggest flex in the world (laughs) is to get that early. I had my pumpkin spice. And then um, this past week I went and got my nails done. I actually went back to my gels and I got like a dark, dark burgundy. I'm super ready for fall. My God, I am so that girl who is like fall centered. And I feel like it just makes me feel good about me, which ultimately is part of self-love, which is what we're going to talk about this week. So let's jump into it because self-love, I feel like people think, oh, I went and got my nails done. Oh, I went and got my hair done. Okay, that's self-care. That's good. Not to be confused with self-love, but it is part of self-love, right? So having self-love does include you know, grooming and taking care of yourself and and putting yourself there and having that time. So yes, that is part of it. But it goes so much deeper, right? So self love comes from a place of where you love you. You love yourself for your insecurities. You love yourself for every pound on the scale. You love yourself for every gray hair, every wrinkle, every insecurity. You love you. You don't get to say, I hate this about me and then want somebody to love you. What? Like, that's not a thing. Nor does somebody have to make you feel that much better because you're insecure about it? Like that's, that's, that's not a thing. That's not love. So very often we, we misconstrue codependency and attachment as love. Okay. And I'm talking when it's unhealthy. I don't mean like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I, I love this and we're connected. That's not attachment. That's connection. And there is a difference. And we'll talk about attachment versus connection. And so understanding that there's going to be a little exercise that I want you to do. Um, for yourself this week. So in the, we're going to start early, right? So this is, if you're driving, you know, I do this because I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving. If you're driving, this is very early on in the podcast. We're at like three minutes and 38 seconds. So when you get to a space where you can get some paper, I want you to write down, who am I? Question mark. Now, I want you to sit with it. Don't just start writing things down. And what does not get to get counted. You do not get to say what your role is. You don't get to say, I'm a great wife. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That's a role. You don't get to use wife, mother, sister, daughter. Like you don't get, no, that's not who you are. Okay. You also don't get to use your profession. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a therapist. I'm like, that's not who you are. That's what you do. Okay. So I want you to really get clear. And this is where we're going to start with the self-love. Because before you can love yourself, you got to know who the hell you are. Now, the tricky part of this is there's going to be two parts of it. So this is the first part. Now, you might literally go, okay, I'm a, oh, not to put wife or husband. Oh, not, oh, well, I can't put that. That's what I do. Oh, I'm good with other people. No, no, no. That's not you. Okay. We can talk about that in the second half of it. But I want you to really sit with who you are, not what you do and not what your titles are. And this is where the second part of this exercise comes into play. And the second part of this exercise is as you're trying to figure it out, right? And let's say you've written two or three things down. 
then I want you to go back and look at it and say, is this truly what I believe or is it what I think other people want of me? Because we've talked about this before, that when you're brought to this planet, right, you're given to these people and then these people have, the, you have a role, right, that's given to you early on. You're given some weird name, right? We all have weird names, right? We're just, here's your name. Okay, well, we won't even get to pick it. And then you might be given a religious affiliation and a political affiliation and expectation of what kind of education you're supposed to have. You've been here for five freaking minutes. So it does. It makes sense that as you grow up, you're like, okay, well, the, this is who I am as a person or this is what my family stands for. Or, uh, okay, I'm not asking you to be this big martyr for the whole family. I'm literally just asking you to ask who you are because you cannot adequately have self-love until you know who the hell you are. And you can't know who you are until you're willing to sit and say, maybe I don't know. And that's perfectly fine. Because this entire time that you've been living your life, you might have thought that you were this way or you were, I'm a mom and, and, and that's who I am. No, that's not who you are. That's just part of what you do. Yeah, you are a mom. That is a fact-based thing. But that's not your identity. You get really caught up when that's your identity. Okay. And so now, so this is, so now you have this information, right? So you look at it and now you go, huh, okay, well, okay. So let's say it's taken you weeks to figure this out because you don't have to do this all in one time. And you're at that space and you're like, wow, okay. Well, now I want you to say to yourself, if you're driving, well, if you're driving, you're probably already doing this exercise. So it wouldn't matter. But now we're at six minutes and 39 seconds in the podcast. This is the second part. And I say this if you're driving, so you can go back in and reference it. So here is the part that I want you to get to. And the part I want you to get to is say, okay, in my love relationships, now this could be friendships, it could be uh, relationships with the family, partner relationships. What do I consider to be love? Okay, what do you consider when you give love to people? Okay, so go ahead and write that down. Like make a list. Okay, this is meant to be a long process, but this is self-help. It's free. I mean, if you don't like free stuff, you can turn it off. It's fine. And it's on YouTube, so you can listen, hear it. I mean, you can watch, hear it kind of thing. And then, of course, if you want to set up something where it's one-on-one on how to implement it, we can do that. My website and everything is in the show notes. I work all over the world. So here's the thing, right? Very often when you're looking at love, I want you to ask yourself, are you trying to be their love, uh, their love raft? Like, are you trying to be their love life raft? And are you trying to fix things for them? Because that's not love. I mean, that's, you know, working with each other and compromise is love. Communication is love. Like, yes, being there when somebody is having a bad day is love. Not fixing them, being there. Because very often, sometimes people don't need fixing. They just need listening right? There's, there, your job isn't to just walk around fixing everybody because you want everybody to be happy. Fawn response, and you're not a taco, you're not making everybody happy, number one. Number two, what does receiving love, what does somebody loving you, and I mean, you know, you're obviously going to look at it a little different, like, what does it look like to be loved by my parents and siblings? What does it look like to be loved by my partner? I mean, it's going to be a little different, right? So you sit with those. If you're looking for someone to make you feel better without knowing who you are, that's a codependent type relationship. Now, that does come from A, not even knowing who you are, uh, often through trauma. And remember, trauma is an unwanted, an emotional unwanted response to a situation. So we've all had traumas. So very often, what you're looking at on how you want to be, I want somebody who's going to support me. Okay, that's great. But now we go back to support you how. Supporting you is like way blanket, support you financially, support you emotionally. And then what does it mean to support you emotionally? Because it's not going to be spend time with me every Saturday at, at nine to 12. Like, no, that's again, we don't need to be in a space where you have to feel the need to be with somebody all the time. Wanting to be with them is one thing. And but not all the time. There has to be a balance. We can't have a black and white lifestyle here. Gotta live in the 50 shades of gray. So here's the thing. Human beings are not put on this planet and the one doesn't exist. You are the one for yourself. Your self-love is the one. Everybody else is just enhancing that one. No human being is the one because then you're putting all that expectation that this person is going to come in and just make you feel good. That is no one's title, no one's role. You are the cake, they are the icing. They are the cake, you are their icing. 
So it comes into play where love is compromising, not sacrificing. Sacrificing would be, oh my God, I never do anything I want to do because all these other people need me and I don't even know what I want to do anymore. That's sacrificing. That's not love. That's a fawn response. That's people pleasing. That's not love. Okay. Then you have to ask, why are you doing that? That's a trauma response. Then you have to go back to the trauma. Then you have to be in therapy and mindful coaching in order to heal the traumas. You see what I'm saying? So everything that you think of love may not actually be love at all. It may be codependency or an attachment style, right? So love will always only ever start with yourself. And what does it mean for self-love? Okay, let's break it down. Self-love is where you can look at somebody else's uh, prospects of, not perspective, success. It's when you're looking at somebody else's success and you're not comparing from the negative. If you want to pull inspiration, that's great. Like, oh my God, that they did really good. They came out of the, in COVID. They really blossom into their own business. And wow, I, I really want to pull from that. Okay. What you don't get to do is go, oh my God, how did they do that? Wow, I wish I could do something like that. That is saying that you're not, that all of a sudden somebody's better than you some way. That's not self-love. That's not self-love at all. So self-love, and again, this is a process. And by the way, this is a lifelong process that's a daily process. You don't get to just practice it when you're feeling down or practice it when you're feeling up. It is a daily practice for the rest of your life to continuously work on self-love. So because what you're doing very often when you do comparisons is you are comparing what what you think success feels like to the other person because of how you're looking at it, how you think you would feel. But you can't do that because every story... I mean, every glory has a story. So you only see the glory and then you make up the story, but you don't get to do that. So when you have self-love, you're not comparing unless you're going to have inspiration from it. But you can look and go like, wow, I am so happy for Bob. Man, that's great. And literally feel that gratitude for him. Number one. Number two, you don't think about all these awful things that you've done in the past. Oh my God, I'm so terrible for this. And why did I do this? And I'm such a bad person. And okay, that's not self-love. That, I mean, what's that doing? That's self-sabotage. Again, therapy will help this. So also, also not focusing on all these things that you have to be doing. Oh my God, I should be doing more of this. And why am I not doing this? And I need to be further. Okay, calm down. You are putting so much pressure on yourself. And then, and then you utilize that and want somebody else to love you, to make you feel good about yourself. No, that is not a thing. Nor is it their responsibility or role to do that. Someone should not have to tell you every five minutes that they love you. Someone should not have to present to you flowers every Friday be, to show you that they love you. That that's, that's just an act of service or gifts, right? Oh, that's not act of service, it's gifts. But that's what I'm saying. So self, uh, So love of another human being, let's say in a partner's perspective, is always going to come from a place of compromise and communication and understanding that you need to do your non-negotiables and your negotiables. Now, we did, we talked about this before. So if you've done that, that's great. Then you already have that in, in your arsenal. If you haven't and you're driving, we're at 13 minutes and 11 seconds. This is the second part, is I want you to pull out a piece of paper and write down non-negotiable and then negotiable. And these are your non-negotiables. I mean, absolute relationship deal breakers or start of relationship deal breakers. An example. For me, I love animals. You guys know this if you follow me on Instagram. I love my animals, okay? My animals are amazing to me. So if I was dating somebody, because, you know, we have three cats and they rule this house. And my husband's fine. If, in fact, I was dating or starting to date somebody... And they they were pretty good. They kind of had a lot of other qualities that I loved a lot. But they said to me, oh, God, I don't like animals in the house. Well, that is a deal breaker for me. We are not going to continue this relationship. I mean, we are just not. That is a non-negotiable for me, right? And very often, it's usually a non, I'm obviously a non-negotiable for them because they're like, I absolutely under no circumstances want animals in the house. Well, I'm not good for them and they're not good for me. So first, and another one for me, and like there, I have a whole list of them, but then I have like a crap ton. You should have a whole bunch more negotiables than you do non-negotiables, but your non-negotiables need to be very clear, okay? And understand not to use your defense mechanism as a non-negotiable. So like for me, that is a legit thing. I have been an animal lover all my life. And if somebody doesn't love animals, we're just not going to be in a relationship, And so that is literally a non-negotiable. We are not, I'm not bending. I'm not flexing. I'm it's no. So you have to be able to sit with and say, 
what are my non-negotiables? But get clear on them. Your non-negotiables. Because at the end of the day, everybody's going to have maybe different non-negotiables. Under your negotiable, like an example of that would be like, oh, it'd be nice if the person was taller than me. But now that may be your non-negotiable. That's fine. But it's just, it's a negotiable for me. It's, it's not that deep. I'm like, cool. If you have all the other things and you're like this animal lover and we're a great, you're a great person and all these things are happening, I, you can be four foot, well, maybe not four foot tall, but like maybe, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's a negotiable for me. So you have to get very clear before you can adequately receive love and give love, you have to know who you are. You can't love yourself when you don't even know who you are because you've been too busy trying to make sure mom and dad are happy with you and that your sisters and brothers are good with you and that the coworkers are good with you and that your kids are good with you and that all these people are good with you that you've lost who you are, that you don't know who you are. So you can't love yourself. In turn, you become codependent on other people because those people sort of make you feel good in that moment. And then you grab onto them like they're a life raft. Human beings are not life rafts. They're not meant to be life rafts. There's not the one. You are the one for yourself. So now this is where it becomes problematic. Because very often, if let's say you've had really bad trauma and you've had horrible relationships and maybe you didn't have a lot of nurturing growing up as a kid, we know that is a trauma response. That's why you have to be in therapy. You can't just pick up a couple self-help books and think like, okay, I, I, I can knock this out. No, you cannot. You cannot. Yes, yeah, self-help books are great as a tool. You cannot just do that on your own because you're going to do it from a space of only what you're comfortable in or only how you want to see something. That is not how growth works. Growth does not work because you're comfortable and your boundaries aren't meant to make other people comfortable. And here is the reality. Here's another part of self-love. Another part of self-love is being able to look at yourself in the mirror, naked, and love all of you. Yes, it's a process. I know it's not going to be overnight. This means, again, every pound, every gray hair, every wrinkle, got to love who you are. Every bad decision, got to love who you are. Because at some point, maybe you didn't have the tools given to you and it was your survival mechanism to get here. Let's not look at it from a negative. Of course, you want to grow. What you don't get to do is say, I have an attachment style and this is just how I am. No, no, no. You can work through those attachment styles in therapy and possible medication. So you don't get to hold on to it and say, well, this is just how I am. That's not a thing. That's, and, it's, and then you want everybody else to kind of cater to you. That's not a thing. Or you can't cater to other people either. Okay? So being able to understand that another big part of self-love is not only establishing what your boundaries are, which are your basically boundaries are negotiables, non-negotiables. That's legitimately what they are. Negotiable, non-negotiable. So you have your emotional boundaries, you have your uh, physical boundaries, you have, you know, like your emotion, you know, all of those things come into play. So an example of that, I did a TikTok on this. Um, an example of that would be if you've had a crappy day and your partner comes in and you instantly dump on them or they instantly dump on you. But in this case, I'm talking about you dumping on them. You are in the wrong and you're overstepping a boundary. That is not a right. Just because somebody's married to you, they do not owe you a listening ear just when you choose to have it. N absolutely not. That's you overstepping a boundary. And then getting mad when they're like, oh my God, I can't right now. And then you're like, well, you never listen to me. And you know what? If, if, never is a, is, if they never want to listen to you, then you need to reevaluate the relationship. It is a compromise, not a sacrifice. You don't sacrifice everything for love. That's not good. Compromise communication, yes. Full sacrifice where you don't even know who you are anymore, that is not okay. And understanding, and, and this vice versa, if somebody's always coming in dumping it on you, then you need to establish that you're not in a space to listen to that right now. And if they're going to take it some kind of way, they're just going to take it some kind of way. You got to be okay with that. Self-love is boundaries and also respecting other people's boundaries right? And you don't have to understand their boundaries. You don't have to rock with their boundaries. But people have different boundaries. And just because you don't understand them doesn't make them wrong. Now, where does that come into play? You don't get to hold on to a relationship just because it's a dysfunctionally okay. Remember, you guys know all my traumas that I've been through. So I get that. Like, oh my God, I've had no stability. And now this person's in my life and they're kind of shitty. But you know what? We don't have all kinds of bad times. Sometimes it's good. Okay, th is that good enough? I don't know. Look at your non-negotiables and your negotiables. Because you, and look at who you are. You might not even know. 
So love is never going through somebody's stuff either. If you feel the need to go through somebody's social media and their emails and their, that is not okay. And it is not, love is not jealous and controlling. That is not love. That's a dictatorship. That is not a relationship. So then you have to say, okay, what am I holding on to? Because if you don't have trust, it might not even be the other person. It just might be some old past traumas that you haven't dealt with that before you're even in a relationship, you need to get that under control. And in order to get it under control, you got to process it. In order to process it, you got to be in therapy and mindful coaching and, and like possible medication and 50 things others, meditations and all these things. So in understanding that it's no one's role to be your life raft. No one's coming to save you. No one owes you anything. Yes, even, in, even including your abusers. They'll owe you anything. My dad didn't owe me anything. He did not owe me anything. I thought he did, but I held on to that. And then it was just holding on to it. It didn't do me any good. It made me angry. It made me sad. It made me think the world owed me something. It doesn't. Just because you have a shitty hand dealt to you, no one owes you anything. And you don't also don't get to say, but I was traumatized. Yes, we know this and we, I, I hear you and I love you and I understand it. But in order to heal it, you don't get to say, I, I've been traumatized and then not work on it and think that that's okay. And you can't work it on it on your own. You don't just pick three or four self-help books up and go, okay, I'm going to try to work on this and what makes me comfortable. And then I want everybody else to, to f- make me feel better, right? And vice versa, it's not your role to fix everybody around you. Your role is to not make everybody happy. And so... You'll know that when you have, when you start to develop that self-love. So self-love is also being able to sit with your thoughts, be able to take yourself on a date, eight o'clock at night in a busy restaurant, just you. Oh my God, I would never do that. Why? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what people would think. Who gives a shit? Why are we worried about other people? This is self-love. This isn't other people love. So it's about asking yourself, What is it that you don't like about yourself that you get so worried about other people's opinion of you? Because when you do have self-love, and again, daily practice for the rest of your life, when you do have self-love, you will not care what other people's opinion of you is. You really won't. I mean, you know, you'll think of it and be like, well, that's dumb or that's stupid. I mean, you know, you're a human being. You're allowed to be a little irritated that's where you observe, but you love yourself enough to be like, oh, wait, that's not my stuff. And you, absolutely, you let it go. Also, not letting go of things is not self-love. You're trying to like do this protection thing of like, if I let go, somehow or another, it means this person's getting over on me. And, and now you've set these sort of rules in play as to what other people need to do. And you get so busy pointing fingers. We all do this, right? So busy pointing a fingers that this person needs to do more of this and this needs to happen and that needs to happen. What about you? What's your role? Because we get real busy looking at everybody else. We get real busy looking at everything everybody else is falling short of. But what about us? Now, this is not to say you sit there and go, oh my God, I'm this horrible person. I need to do this. I need that. No, that's black and white. What I mean by that is you say, okay, what is my ownership in this? Am I, am, am I dumping on my spouse or my partner the second they walk in the door? Because that's not okay. Am I expecting somebody else to understand me because I'm having a bad day? That's not, no. Now, again, there's compromise. But here's the thing. If you don't communicate with your partner or mom or whoever, if you can't communicate how you feel, and you can't listen and be an active listener when somebody says, hey, you know, I think it's better when you take your antidepressants, and then you go, oh my God, what are you saying? I'm crazy? Okay, calm down. If you can't hear criticism, then you damn sure can't give it. I'm telling you that right now. You don't get to criticize others and say what they're doing incorrectly or what you need more of, and I need, I need, I need, and I want, I want, I want, if you get triggered by how somebody else feels. Because remember, everybody's perception is their own reality. You don't have, it doesn't have to be the facts because feelings aren't facts. So you do have to look at yourself and take some accountability and say, can I hear the critique without being triggered? Well, if you have self-love, you damn sure can. Because self-love comes from, ooh, gosh, that did that wrong. Ooh, I was wrong on that. Ooh, guys, listen, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Really, really sorry but I'm going to change that, right? Because you can say I'm sorry 150 times. If you're not making the change, you might as well not say sorry. 
And then you have to say, I also, when you have self-love, you also have to ask to say to yourself, I'm okay with releasing people without trying to change them. You can be an influence on somebody not pushing your agenda. You can be an influence on somebody, but you cannot push your agenda on them and it just assume that they have to change. I think it becomes problematic in relationships when, you know, in the first couple of years, things were going great and communication was awesome. And then now we're four years in and, you know, the love department isn't all that great. And, you know, life has happened and all these things. You're like, God, I just wanted to be back to how it was. But can you communicate that? So now you communicate it and the person just isn't making the change or you're not making the change. Then you have to evaluate, do you want to be in the relationship? And not do you want to be in the relationship because you're willing it, you want to will it in a certain direction. You can't will another person. You don't get to mess with their free will. Now, you don't have to understand it. You don't have to like it. But they don't have to like yours either. And then you have to say, at what price am I, is me staying in whatever this relationship is, including a, par- a parental, a toxic parental relationship? At, at what point do you say, okay, I can't do this for my mental health? Okay, and that's where self-love comes into play. I don't, I think when people hear self-love, they, they just assume it's like I went and got my nails done and I got my hair did. And yeah, that's self-care. And that is a part of self-love because you're putting yourself as a priority and you're taking care of yourself. But remember this, and this is a fact, you cannot give or receive what, at love at 100% healthy unless you know who you are and how much you love yourself, good, bad, and indifferent. Then and only then can you receive healthy love. Can you honestly compromise can, that you can actually get to a space where you're like, hey, you know what? This really made me feel sad. And I... Not sure where this comes from, but I know I want to talk to you about it. Like being able to talk to somebody. If you can't talk to your spouse because you are like, well, they just don't listen, then you need to reevaluate the relationship. You don't get to will it. You don't, okay, they're going to change. They're going to make this happen. And why am I staying here? And yeah, I understand you just can't get up and go. It costs money. There's a lot of other things that come into play. But you also can't just say, well, this is just how it is. And one day it's going to get better. Like that's not a thing. That's the definition of insanity. It literally is. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That is literally the definition of insanity. It is not keep doing it over and over and over and over again and then it finally changes. Like it's, you're, you're trying to will it in a way that it just can't be willed. So remember, self-love is A, knowing who you are, not your roles, but who you are. And then asking yourself, are you happy with who that is? right? And so, okay, well, I really want to work in my spiritual growth, or I want to work in this. Great. Great. That's how you learn that love. That's how you keep growing that love. And it's going to be a daily practice every day for the rest of your life. Being able to get to your to space to where you're not trying to hold on to people, or you're not trying to let them hold on to you, because that gives you this big purpose of being this person. No, you are enough. You, as you are right now sitting there, are enough period, period. So it's understanding that. Now, I'm not asking you not to grow. I'm telling you, you need to grow for the rest of your life. But I'm telling you at every spot that you're in, you are enough. If you are not ever defined about somebody else's love of you, abso-freaking-lutely not. Absolutely not. So this week, it's about asking yourself, who are you? Not your roles, not a mom, not a wife, not a father. No, not a doctor, not a, no. Who are you? And then asking yourself, what are your non-negotiables? What are your true non-negotiables? What are your negotiables? And then what does love look like to, for me to receive love? What does love mean to me to receive from another human being? And obviously you got to classify it as like friends, family, and spouse, you know, lovers. And what does it look like for me to give love? It's not fixing. That's not love. That is not fixing. What does it really mean? Then and only then. Oh, and understanding that you have to look at yourself and love you for who you are. And you know how that happens? By healing your traumas. You do that in therapy. You do it in mindful coaching. Hey, my my website is in the show notes. If you want to work with me, I work all over the world. We can do that. It doesn't have to be me doesn't have to be me, but it has to be somebody. You can't do this by yourself. Not to start. 
you can get the tools and then you can, yes, incorporate them and integrate them in your life. And then you don't need anybody at that time. But I always like to touch base with, with my people, right? Like who takes care of me. And so understanding that when you get to that self-love, self-love is not jealous. Self-love is not controlling ever. That is not love. That is not a relationship. That's a dictatorship. So remember, it is not your role to be miserable. Ask yourself this with your partner. Does my partner make me happy or unhappy more? Do I get joy? Now, happy, I don't even like to use that because your partner can't make you happy. Your partner can bring joy. Am I staying because it's just what I know? Am I afraid to step out? Well, that's because you haven't reached that self-love yet. So that's your homework. Literally remember this, and this is a fact. You can never adequately receive or give 100% healthily unconditional love until you can unconditionally look in the mirror and say, hey, babe, I love you. (laughs) 